MOSFETs, how do they work? Part 5. Okay, I hope you're still with us. I've added some more circuitry. Remember that it's the charge on the MOSFET gate that keeps the gate open and allows current to flow from drain to source through the load. And if we don't have anything to keep the to allow the charge to get off of the gate, the MOSFET stays on until the charge leaks away and the gate field closes the drain source channel and the load turns off. So what I've done here is I've added a 33 microfarad tantalum capacitor right there and what that does is that augments the gate capacitance so once I have this capacitor charged that acts to keep the charge on the gate of the MOSFET and keep it turned on for a long long time because it only takes a tiny charge to keep the gate on and 33 microfarads is a large charge so I've also put in a little variable resistor here. This is a trim pot of 10 mega ohms, and I've got it wired as an ordinary variable resistor from the gate to the negative rail. Can you see that little wire in there? There's a very thin uninsulated wire that's making that connection. Okay, so we have the capacitor that charges along with the gate and then keeps the gate charged and then we have a resistor here, a variable resistor that we can use to bleed that charge off and allow the MOSFET to shut off. You with me so far? Okay, so now remember we have two modes of operation here. We have the switch mode where the resistor is switched in and simply charges the gate and the capacitor and turns the turns sorry about the light uh, okay so if I go to set things back up again okay now notice that the drain is uh, high and the MOSFET is off, right? So if I switch this switch to the switch mode, the light comes on, the drain voltage goes low, and what we've done is we're now in the switch mode so that the capacitor is being charged and this capacitance is now keeping the gate open. But we have this resistor in there. So when I turn this off, boom, the resistor allows that charge to bleed off and vanish. So the gate closes. So if I go to the linear mode of operation over here, now we're on the rheostat and the MOSFET responds to this tiny changes in voltages slowed down a little bit by the presence of the charge on that capacitor. All right. And as usual when we go to center off we've removed the feed to the gate from the positive supply and we're only now isolating this part of the gate circuit so that only the charge on this capacitor is keeping the gate charged. Okay. So let's go to the, I didn't realize there was going to be all that shadow on here, sorry. So if we switch to the switch mode, drain goes low, MOSFET turns on, and the light is nice and bright, right? And now if I switch to center off, the charge decays quickly. But that's a variable potentiometer, a variable resistor there. So let me give it a little bit more resistance. One, two, three, four. 
Now we'll switch on and switch off. Switch on, off, on, off. So you see what's happening there? We've given it a little bit more resistance, so now it takes longer for that charge to bleed off of the gate holding capacitor. Let's give it a little bit more resistance. This is a 10 turn trim pot here. I can get my screwdriver in the slot. One, two, three, four more half turns. So, on, off, on, off. See how it takes a little longer now for that charge to bleed off? So let's give it some more. One, two, three, four. On, off, on, off. And of course the voltmeters are reflecting that as well, just as before. If I go on, the gate voltage drops. Or rather, I'm sorry, the source, or <laughs> sorry, drain, the drain voltage drops to near the battery, to, to near the negative rail. Light is on, MOSFET is on. When I go to off, takes a while for the voltage to drain the charge to drain off and the gate to close and the MOSFET drain voltage to go back up. <sighs> okay, so on, off, with the time constant of the RC circuit determining how long it takes to get down there. So let's give it a little bit more one, two, three, four, more resistance. On, off. On, off. This moving shadow right here is from my ceiling fan overhead. Uh, okay, so let's give it a little more resistance. One, two, three, four. On. Off. On. Oops, sorry. On to the switch area. I switched it accidentally to the linear side for a moment. Off. Okay, let's give it the full 10 mega ohms of resistance. Okay, now we're cranked all the way to the full 10 mega ohms. On. Off. Okay, so I hope you can see what's going on here. The, when we switch to the switch on, the whole gate capacitance, which includes this 33 microfarads, charges up, keeps the gate on, and the MOSFET conducts current. When we switch the switch to the center off position, the gate capacitance is no longer being fed from the positive rail, so it discharges through the available resistance, which is variable, and so the amount of time that it takes to discharge can be controlled. So the less resistance, the faster that charge drains off and the faster the MOSFET turns off. The more resistance, the slower that charge drains off and the longer it takes for the MOSFET to turn off. 
Okay? Thank you for watching.